Okay? Now, whichever ink type you use, it has to perform appropriately throughout the ink train. Okay? It has to flow well through the pumps, and it can't get a bunch of bubbles in it, froth up. It has to flow through hoses, it has to circulate in the ink pan so that it doesn't form eddies and harden in pockets. Uh, it has to uh, transfer to the analog roll. And between the rubber roller and the analog roll that comes into contact with it when it's a two-row configuration, or it has to flow well through doctor chambers, uh, which we'll look at later. But and it has to behave correctly on the analog surface. It has to go into these little holes and come out of those little holes repeatedly, almost instantaneously, fractions of a second. It has to go onto the plate surface and spread out and smooth out before it goes onto the substrate. And it has to uh, go, uh, uh, you know, uh, behave properly on the film or the foil or the paper that you're printing on. So there's a lot of demands placed on this fluid ink. And it has to do it under extreme circumstances with demanding precision, which we're going to look at also a little further down the road. So what's in ink? What's in flexo ink? Well, oh, by the way, we will no longer talk about EB, electron beam, or the letterpress ink. We're going to speak only of solvent-based ink, water-based ink, and UV cured ink. For those three types of ink, basically you have your colorant, which is what gives it the color, resin, which uh, provides the main the, uh, the, the comp it's a component that uh, imparts the main properties of the ink, how it behaves when it's finally printed, how well it resists scratching and chemicals, how it flows, and additives that complement the mix and do specialized things depending on what you're trying to achieve. So, colorant. Oops. The colorant pigment is about Anywhere from zero, if you have a colorless coating that you are applying <coughs> to a substrate, uh, to about 20%. Okay, above that, you start to, and I was speaking to a gentleman here last night about that concept of what we call pigment load. You can't just, if you want a color to get darker and darker, you can't just keep adding color to it. There's a limit because it starts to interfere with the, uh, the way that that ink should behave. So the colorant that we use in flexo inks are usually pigments. They're solid, like rock, and literally, many of them are indeed mined rock stuff. Uh, and other things, they're, na they're naturally occurring, a lot of them. They're insoluble. They do not dissolve. They, are, they, they get crunched up and crushed in special equipment so that they're very fine, but they never become liquefied. They're always solid little particles. They can be, uh, and they're color compounds. They can be organic, inorganic, metallic, fluorescent, whatever, but they are solid and insoluble. Now, on the other hand, dyes, which I see a lot of the beautiful saris here that I love, I'm sure that uh, folks in India are familiar with dyes. They are soluble. That means that they they actually become ions in the ink, or they dissolve in the in, in the uh, ink, and you could not filter them out. They become liquid. They uh, usually provide and flex away sort of support role. Uh, maybe you want to enhance uh, the color a little bit, that the pigment. Um, uh, you know, doesn't quite do it. Complements the pigment, uh, and uh, you, you know, you'll find it sometimes in specialty printing applications. Like uh, I worked at a place where we did what's called sublistatic printing. So we would actually flexographically print a dye-based ink onto a substrate that was then passed over a fabric with heat, and the dye would go from a solid state to a gas 
and become a solid when it cooled, never melting. And there are benefits to uh, uh, print, uh, giving color to fabrics that way. Like we're not here to talk about clothes. Now resin. <clears throat> resin is, again, the part of the ink that gives it its main properties. In fact, except for the colorant, most everything disappears from the ink. And what's mostly left behind will be this resin and the pigment. The resin holds that pigment to the substrate. So it's the main determinant of the properties. It determines the rheology. And when we talk about rheology, it's the body, how heavy a fluid is, how it behaves, how it flows. It determines how it lays down on the plate, and on the substrate. It determines how much gloss you'll have, how it adheres, how well it resists scuffing and scratching, how well it resists temperature in, in applications where there may be extreme cold or extreme hot environments, and chemical resistance. Sometimes it may be uh, uh, lawn equipment for cutting grass or something may have a label, a safety label on it. Well, it has to uh, stay on there, and the ink has to stay on there even if you accidentally pour some fuel, some petrol over onto the label, for example. So that is determined by the resin. There are various types, including polyamides, acrylic, nitrocellulose, and in the case of UV inks, and oligomer, okay? And those things, those names are not important, okay? I'm just giving you that information, but the name is not important. Solvent and water-based inks, uh, the, the solvent and water-based inks, not UV, the resin is solid in form. It's, if you have no solvent, or no water, which is a solvent also, the resin will be a hard thing. Very, very hard. It's like a plastic. So you need to you need a compatible solvent to dissolve those resins and for them to remain fluid. Okay? Now UV inks is a special little animal. And they as resin they use an oligomer. And basically, an oligomer in this case is a fluid. <coughs> when we had our little emergency over here, I moved this stuff. But the oligomers, you have, well, I think I have another slide, but I'll mention it now. Uh, you have your bucket of ink, and you have your, your liquid ink in there. Some of it is these little monomers, okay? They're type of little molecules, single monomers, mono, and then you have oligomers, which are a multiple monomers together, perhaps, okay? And that's floating around in this oligomer in liquid state until we do something to it. Now, oligomers, as I just said, are not, not solid, but, li but remain liquid. However, they still require a solvent because the viscosity and the, the body of the oligomer is too heavy. So we have to do something to reduce it so that it will do what I said earlier, flow through all those parts in the press. Now, whichever resin you use, whether it's those others or the oligomer, the solvent, it has to be compatible with the solvent that's used. And that's pretty obvious. And you can combine resins, and they do, to achieve certain properties. That's done all the time. So right there, ink, is starting to become complicated. We've got all these ingredients in various ratios. We cannot just play around with that. We must control that. Now, the solvent in the ink, whether it's water, whether it's alcohol, uh, alcohol or whether it's monomer, uh, lowers the viscosity of the ink <coughs> or liquefies the hard resins. Now, in a special case, the solvent and water used in solvent and water-based ink evaporates and disappears. It does not remain as part of the ink, for the most part, when you're done. However, 
the solvent used for UV inks becomes a part of the uh, ink film that remains. It does, none of it disappears. So what happens, and we'll go into it, is it actually becomes an important part of the behavior of that ink, the properties of the ink when it's finished. Okay? But the one that still provides the grain that is, is largely or more responsible for the uh, properties of the ink remains the oligomer. 